Hey, it's John Lee Dumas of EO Fire, and it's The Entrepreneurial You, the show for dedicated and passionate Caribbean entrepreneurs seeking daily inspiration, brought to you by author, speaker, and award-winning entrepreneur, Henneka Wakis porter You must be prepared to ignite. Coming up. On this episode of The Entrepreneurial You... A leader must be generous. A leader spends time. Jesus, as the greatest leader of all time, took time to be with a woman at the well, took time to speak to prostitutes, took time to speak to people who people never spoke to, took time and went into Zacchaeus' house for tea. Who does that? Who does that, right? A leader does that. Hi, I'm Henneke watkins Porto, your inspirational leader and host of the Entrepreneurial You podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Jamaica Stock Exchange. And now let's go to today's episode. Episode 70 of the Entrepreneurial You podcast features a certified speaking professional, management consultant, an executive coach and best-selling author. For over two decades, he has been instigating the transformation of people, organizations, and even nations with his compelling life stories and thought-provoking experiences, which he gained from critical roles in over a billion dollars worth of projects in three of Canada's biggest banks. He is sought after globally because of his strong presence, the compelling depth of his messages, a contagious passion, and his exceptional ability to electrify diverse audiences, whether small or large. It is a privilege of mine to welcome Alex Ihamo to the Entrepreneurial You podcast. Welcome, Alex. Oh, thank you so much, Erica. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. What is your favorite fact about Jamaica? Roti. Ah! <laughs> tea. Yeah. I, lo- I love roti. <laughs> oh, my word. Packing up the chicken is sometimes is all messy, but man, that, that's, that's, uh, that's a world-class food. I don't know why they don't have it in five-star hotels around the world. All right. Today, <laughs> we're looking at whether there is a connection between entrepreneurship and leadership. So let's dive into it. How do you define leadership, Alex, and entrepreneurship? And what, if any, is the connection between the two? Thanks for asking me that. It's a topic you rarely hear people talk about. Uh, People, when they are talking about entrepreneurship, they just focus on business and all that. When they're doing leadership, they just... And I'm like, the missing link between um, in organizations is because they haven't built a bridge bet- between entrepreneurship and leadership. So what's entrepreneurship? What's leadership? Well, um, entre- now I have clients who say, well, I started this business because that's what people are doing now. So there are people that start businesses for one reason or the other. But if you talk about the entrepreneur, you, this is not, I inherited this business. This is not, uh, I want it. But what is in me that I can offer the world and put a strategy in place to get paid for it. To me, that's the, I, I know that's completely different from how people see entrepreneurship, but that's how I see it. Um, you can be doing some business, maybe you know you, you want to do car sales because you're doing or investing in homes or doing real estate or whatever. But if you see the entrepreneur spirit, it must, it should, must be tied to your purpose in life. Basically, is the art of building a business on the reason you were created, your purpose. That's how I say it. So um, when we talk about people like Bill Gates and Oprah Winfrey, these people are not just doing business. Like these are true entrepreneurs. They pursue. If if they were to lose everything today, they would build it again. But a businessman, if they lose something, they look for another business to go to. <laughs> Right. So, so that is true. A businessman is just looking for any opportunity to make money, uh, irrespective of um, what may or may not transpire. But a true entrepreneur, you know you were created for this. That's how you know them. Now, a, a leadership, on the other hand, is you igniting. In my book, The Mystic of Leadership, my definition is very clear. I said leadership is a spirit that must be ignited by purpose, guided by principles, and sustained by passion. You have to be passionate. You have to, like there are three keys in my in my view, there are three 
there's over, probably over a million definition of leadership, but there are three keys or components in leadership for me. Number one is purpose. That's what ignites it, regardless of whether you have position of authority or not. Number two is principles. Principles is okay. This is are the true principles of exceptional leadership. And number three is passion. So um, how do they bridge? Once you discover your purpose, you become a leader. It doesn't matter if you hold a position of authority or not. Once you do, the moment you say, I was born to do this, you are a leader of that. Now, as you grow in that, you now say, well, okay, hold on a second. I was just mentoring some um, of my students uh, actually today. And, you know, so they invited one of them to come speak in a school and immediately jumped to go. And I go, well, how much are they going to pay you? And he goes, um, you know, I told them whatever they have, they pay me. I said, uh, 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 uh. no, that's not, you have not ignited the entrepreneur spirit in you. No, you're, you're, you're a leader. You are seen as a leader because, hey, come do leadership in this school. You're around there. Come speak in this church. You're around there. No. I said, listen, I, I used to do that the, the, probably decades ago now, at least 20 years ago. Like, you know, I like to, you know, can you come speak? Yes, yes, yes. But hold on a second. And I told him, I said, my suit and my shoes were wearing out. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 look, I looked in the mirror one day. I said, baby, this suit, I am tired of it. <laughs> I need, yeah, I, I need, I like, I was going to buy me a new suit. Man, I love when I get speaking engagement. Now I build the price of my suit into the bill. I'm telling you, like the, if I'm, I, I know the suit I, I want to buy. Too. I know, in fact, I know the next seven suit I want to buy. So if I the next seven engagements, I'm going to pay for the next seven suit at least. Right. So, yeah, absolutely. So that's the difference. Difference is one leadership. You ignite your purpose. You are ready. You are done. If you're singing, you are the best singer. If you're writing books, if it's a coach, if it's a speaker. But now when you start making money on it without listen to this, without taking away from the spirit of leadership. Because the moment you start focusing strictly on the money, you are a businessman or a businesswoman. Ah, so it's not just about money in entrepreneurship. It's, it goes way beyond that. Oh, it's spiritual. It's actually spiritual. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, yes, absolutely. It's, it's, you know, I'm going to give you the best service ever. Or I'm going to produce the best book ever. Or write the best book ever. Produce the best product ever. Like, oh, man, I'm going to get paid for it. <laughs> but you're, you're not saying, though, because, you know, I know that uh, perfectionism and, and perfectionist behavior will prevent other persons, prevent persons from actually pursuing their purpose and their passion because they're thinking that they're not able to write the best book right now or they're not able to because they're not equipped to do it. So are you saying then that should not be pursued until you believe that you, you can do it uh, perfectly? Absolutely. Nothing is worth pursuing until you so much believe that it'd be the best possible. The best possible doesn't mean in the if we put it in Academy Awards, you're gonna win it. But <laughs> when you look at it, when you look at it yourself, you know, I, I teach my students this. I, I said, you know, when people say, "Oh, I'll do my best," I wrote that in my latest book. I said, "Doing doing your best is not enough. Do the best possible." Whoever said your best is the best. Once you have done a, uh, an in-depth research, which is one of my skills, like I research everything, like I've looked at everything, and you know that, as the saying court, that is beyond reasonable doubt. You know in your heart that beyond reasonable doubt, this is the best out there. Then you've done the best. But if you had not researched, if you have not looked at what other people are doing, if you have not done enough homework, and you say, well, I just did my best, um, my daughter's best could be better than that. Like, so um, if you want to write a book, right? And, and I think I was saying this to another student, like I write forward for people's book and they send me book and say, oh, please write me forward. And, and you know, I, they, they, some people probably just put forward, but I, I read it. I go through it and I go. So I sent it back to the other guy the other day. I said, listen, you have so much errors in the book. I said, I can write here forward because I see the story is good. But you need to revise. Oh, no, no, no. Just write me the forward. And then the person is going to revise it later. I'm like, nah, I don't do that. No, because I'm it's right, your, it's your right. work on the line. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. It's yes. my brand on the line. I said, I don't do that. No, I said. And what really 
it didn't upset me, but what just um, what made me feel sorry for for the person was he felt I was being difficult. And he's like, you know, some people think, oh, well, you think you're a big star, you don't want to. That's really unfortunate because yeah. uh, uh, that person is not going to go far in life. It's not a curse. People are like, oh, no, it's not a curse. You are, you can sit and watch people and know who's going to hell, who's going to heaven. I'm serious. You can sit and watch who's going to be excellent and who's not going to be excellent. It's so latitude. It's all attitude. The, 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 the man was on the roadside. The people were passing. The priest, the Levi, the good Samaritan came. He took him. Yeah, like, you know, I tell somebody, I said, today we are still in the same, the same. Times haven't changed. It's the same. There are people that will pass you by. There have been research of somebody pretending to be a beggar, sat by the train station, and people were passing him. And then the next day, he put a dog on the same spot, and people were stopping to pet the dog. Oh my gosh, that's a, uh, that, yeah, that, so, that's a salient message so, right there. Yeah, yeah. So, so what's my point? My point is, you know, they are, uh, everything. Some people will say, "Oh, we are not doing this about the money." Okay, all right. Let's see how you're gonna pay your mortgage tomorrow. <laughs> like, hello. Yes, that's that's a point. Hello. That's a point. Hello. They are to everything we pursue in life falls into leadership and entrepreneurship. Leadership is impact. Entrepreneurship is income. I teach this when I certify coaches. Oh, no, in my program, the coaching certification program I have, I say, listen, great people. I know a lot of people. 25 years, they have been making impact. People love them, but their shoes are tattered. They are running from one range to the other. Like, it's time to monetize what your purpose is. So income and income and impact. Income and impact. I'm telling you, I don't at my level, Anika, I don't wake up and say, what impact am I going to make today? I wake up and it's already impactful. Like I put a post out, people are impacted. I put a YouTube video out, people are impacted. I make a call, people are impacted. I have clients to impact that day. So I better be thinking of money. Which one comes first? Is it a chicken or egg situation? Uh, is it entrepreneurship or leadership? How? If, is- if you step, sorry to interrupt, I know you're going with that. If you step into entrepreneurship, Without igniting your leadership principle, uh, leadership spirit, you are a businessman. Oh, I see. I know you know businessmen. They walk in with their escalade and they have the big suit. And when they sit down with you, um, the first thing they talk about is money. So how much? So so what's my percentage? And they, they just do two hours with them. It's all percentage and money. But if you want to see somebody who is holistic, somebody who is deeply spiritual, somebody who understands what we are talking about right now, he sees that and says, okay, like I'm going, I'm doing summit around the world. I do Kenya Leadership Summit, Canada Leadership Summit, Jamaica Leadership Summit. Like when I'm going into countries, like I'm, I'm looking at what is the, what are the issues in the, in the country right now? What topics do they need to hear? And who needs to be in that event? But other people are like, how many people are we going to get? How many, how much are we going to make? If you were to die young, make sure you die having made an impact. But if you die having made a lot of income and no impact, well, I guess it's clear where you're heading. <laughs> it's an excellent point on which we can take a break. We're going to, I'm going to be reading a review from one of my listeners. This review comes from username love road and this person is from the usa says about the podcast highly recommend to listen if you are an entrepreneur highly recommend to listen if you're an entrepreneur again you can leave a review for me in itunes and i would appreciate that very much but if you do leave a review i'd love for you to email me at henico watkiss portal at gmail.com and let me know because there are so many different countries with Apple stores and if I don't go into the individual country then I won't be able to know that you would have left a review for me so please send me an email and so I'll read it in an upcoming episode of the entrepreneurial you Leadercast Woman 2018 is happening October 12 at the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel. Attend Leadercast Woman 2018 and learn how you can be a leader who motivates people and champion ideas in ways you never thought possible. Register now at hennikawatkisporter.com or call 876-849-2571 to claim your 20% discount for a limited time only. That's hennikawatkisporter.com or 876-849-2571 to claim your 20% discount for a limited time. 
We needed to raise capital, but our experience with local financial institutions was that they were cautious and slow to act, and interest rates were far too high. We had real concerns about financing our business through outside equity investors and the possibility of interference. Could we get a fair valuation for our business? We had our own ideas about the business and its value. Should I go the traditional route of bank financing or should I try the Jamaica Stock Exchange? So we made a call and experienced transformation of our business through conversations. I'm John Mafood, CEO of Jamaican Teas, and we're listed on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. Give us a call today at 876-967-3271 to begin your transformation through conversation. We want to see your company listed on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. So you want to start your podcast, but you don't know where to host it. Go to hennekawatkisporter.com and claim your one month free of podcast hosting on Blueberry. Or if you already have your host, but aren't getting statistics on your podcast, you can claim one month free stats from Blueberry at hennekawatkisporter.com. That's hennekawatkisporter.com. Go right now and claim your one month free statistics. Welcome back. And I'm having a conversation with Alex Ihama. And Alex, he's a CEO of the International School of Greatness. Great conversation we've been having on leadership and entrepreneurship. And I've been enjoying the the points of view that Alex has been sharing with me. And as I continue... What we are going to be going into are some of the core principles that Alex believe that an, a leader, well, not just an entrepreneur, because we spent some time on entrepreneurship, but a leader must possess. So what are some of those core principles? There are a couple of things a leader must possess. Number one, a leader must be purposeful, purposeful, like a leader, everything a leader does. I know there are some quotations out there that says everything rises and falls on leadership, but I, I believe even before that, everything rises and falls on purpose. So the second one is principles. The third one is passion. Those are three that makes up my definition of leadership. In my book, The Mystic of Leadership, I said leadership is a, per, is, a, is a spirit that must be ignited by purpose, sustained by passion and guided by principles. And, you know, if, you know, there's a chapter, I raise it up to seven key. In addition to those ones, they want to have humility, which is really, really foundational. In fact, um, humility, uh, without humility, you won't be open to critical, um, constructive feedback. Without humility, you won't pursue knowledge. Without, I mean, humility is massively critical. Uh, a leader must be generous. And people say, well, generous doesn't just mean money. Generous doesn't mean time. A leader spends time. Jesus, as the greatest leader of all time, took time to be with a woman at the well, took time to speak to prostitutes, took time to speak to people who people never spoke to, took time and went into Zacchaeus' house for tea. Who does that? Who does that? Right? A leader does that. Right? A, a leader does that. Great leaders I have seen, I have read, I have been with. Oh man, they they just amazing. Like, like I love going to mega churches when I when I'm in a city. Like if I'm in Atlanta, I go to all those big churches. If I'm in Texas, you know, even if I'm in Africa, wherever I'm, I'm going. And and you know, sometimes I get to meet the leader. Sometimes I don't. But most of the time, I watch them. And many of them, the moment the service is done, they disappear. But the true leaders, they stay until the last person is gone, or until they make sure they are not needed. Right. So, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. When I go speak in churches, they want to put me in a little room. And when I speak, they want to rush me to the car, rush me to the hotel. I say, no, I don't do that. Right. Like, connect I, want with people, people. I, want, I, I want people to connect with me. I want people to talk to me. I want to, you know, and, and while because while I'm speaking, my spirit is pointing out people in the audience that I need to connect to. So if you rush me to the hotel, how do you know one of them will end up killing themselves that same night, which actually we've been able to save those kind of situations. I've had somebody come up to me and say, I, I don't know why I'm here. Somebody forwarded me an invitation, never heard about you before, don't even know who you are. But I do know that I tried to kill myself twice. I've been listening to your message today. My life has changed. Well, that's, a, that's impact. That's what I'm talking about. All right? That's what I'm talking about. So so um, a, a leader must must be generous, must be humble, 
uh, must be purposeful, must be passionate, must have principles. A leader must have focus. A leader must have vision. Um, a leader, most especially, um, must must be an epitome of love. You don't go in the bank today and say, oh, we are hiring a new director. He must have love. People think you're crazy. But the truth of the matter is, the truth of the matter is without that love in that director, he, he could become a tyrant. I'm not saying he, he, he is, but he, he could be. Like I was having a conversation with the CEO of one of the biggest banks here in, in Toronto. And he says, you know, Alice, we're trying to, we, we recommended you for uh, to come and speak to um, the board. And, um, there's a big bank, massive bank, one of the Fortune 100 companies in the world. And he says, you know, one of them said, well, based on his research, uh, you, your messages have spiritual connotations in it. I'm like, okay, that's it. Interesting. I said, okay, uh, and I called his name. I said, um, and I've had that before, but I called his name and I said, okay, if you were hiring two, uh, two directors today, they are both Harvard graduate, both smart, both talented, but yet one loves himself and only. The other one loves others as much as he loves himself. One do to himself all he wants. The other one do to others as, you know, like I, I, I was giving him a Examples of and what says, means spiritual means, that, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> spiritual I'm with mean you right you're here. You're I'm with you. The, you, you, you. That doesn't mean you're going to come to the bank with a Bible and beat everybody in the head. Spiritual means you love. That's it. You care. You care. You are kind. I worked in the corporate world, three big banks in, in Canada and some other major companies. I can still remember. You know, I'm connected with some of them still on LinkedIn, and man, some of them were disgruntled. So leadership, it, it's it love with legs, if you will. Yeah, you're, you're, <laughs> yes, love with legs. A good point at which to segue this, um, as we're wrapping up, I'm going to take an audience question that's on, it's coming from Facebook, from Kevron Greatness Sutton. And he says, his question to you is, what was it like to be mentored by Dr. Miles Monroe and your greatest takeaway from him? When I went to meet him, I, I was at a stage in my life where I know I needed a mentor of his status, right? I, I had basically outgrown the mentors I've had, which is kind of unfortunate, but sometimes, and I use this to encourage people, um, if you have a mentor and you are growing faster than a mentor, it's okay to leave the mentor respectfully. <laughs> I'm just saying, right? Because some people, some people, they stick, you know, some people are smarter than their mentors. I'm like, what are you learning? You know, you're just, you're learning nothing. So anyway, I always grew my mentors and I needed one that was at his level. And, you know, I researched some other people and I really fell in love with him. Ordered 20 of his books in time, decided to read all of them. They came same day, UPS, and then I bought me a package to Bahamas, and I went to meet him. And, you know, um, when I met him, like I went to his church, I was the first to arrive in the church and so that I can sit right behind where he was going to sit. I remember him coming to church, and he's looking behind, like, who's this guy sitting right <laughs> directly behind me? I haven't seen this one before. And to cut the story short, right after they said amen to the last prayer, I was the first in front of him. Yeah, the line was out the door. And when I told him, I said, listen, I my name's Alex Hammer. Um, I have listened to, I've spent at least uh, 500 hours on your materials, both videos and book. And I opened my bag I was carrying. Here was all his book. And I said, but I brought one of my book for you. And here's the book I brought for you. I came, I am not a tourist. I haven't even seen the water. I flew down for this purpose and this purpose only. I would love you to be my mentor. He looked straight in my eye, put his hand on my shoulder and said, huh, Miss, he looked at the book, Welcome to Greatness. He said, okay, Mr. Greatness, walk with me. Uh, and, and I literally walked with him and was with him till he saw everybody. And he got in his Jaguar and drove himself. And I, he asked, uh, there was a bus, a, a little van, and he asked me to get in the van and the driver would bring me to his house. I went to his house that day. If my belly knew me, that's a leader. Whoa. And that's an experience, you know, and what an it experience. shows sat, your dedication I, I, too and commitment to yes. greatness. <laughs> yes, I sat down. I was just amazed. Food was coming. I wasn't focused on the food. I was just like, wow, like this, like this is it. Like, like hello, like, you know, I, and I was just there and I met the wife, met the kids, met his dad took pictures with all of them and we had a great time. I said, well, my vacation package was five days 
and I'm staying at, and I remember one of those hotels there, and he says, okay. I, and I met with him every day. And the next day I met with him, he told me, he says, oh, I've gone through your book. This is a great book. You are Mr. Greatness. Walk with me. And he'll be introducing me to people, you know, and, and he taught me stuff. And when I was leaving, there were things he told me that completely changed my life. In fact, I would not be where I am today if it wasn't for that character. And when I wanted to go, I said, well, I know um, this may be too much to ask, but can I have your direct cell number instead of the office number? He looked at me and said, oh, sure. And he started to call the number. I wasn't even prepared to take the number. <laughs> Immediately, I started to tack, 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 tack. I, I, I basically used my phone to call the number. And he says, oh, by the way, you can take my number in Atlanta, too. I'm always there. And he gave me two Bahamas numbers, Bahamian number, one Atlanta number, like direct cell numbers. Right? And I remember calling him at some point. Yes, I remember calling him once. And um, he, he picked up. He was asleep, actually. when he, I didn't know he was in a different time zone um, that was really um, massively different. And I go, oh. For me, he said, sorry, I, I woke you up. He said, he said, no, you already woke me up. What is it you called? What's going on? Like, that's, that, that's how he closely brought me. In fact, I got a message from him uh, nine days before he passed away. Yeah, um, he said, Greet, uh, greetings from Air Dar Salaam, Alex. I still have that message. He says, I'm on my way to uh, Bahamas. Make sure you meet me in Freeport for that, his conference. And I responded and I said, Papa Miles, I won't be able to meet you. I'm speaking to uh, hundreds of sales reps for one of the big banks in Canada that day. I don't know if you remember, I told you, but in any case, I'll still come to Bahamas to see you after the conference. That was nine days. And then it passed away. Oh, interesting story. Um, it teaches a lot about determination and purpose and impact. Now, on this final leg of our interview, as we're at the tail end, you have a leadership summit coming, um, coming up in Jamaica, both in Jamaica and in Canada. Now, share information about that. And when you're done with that, just tell us how we may get in touch with you on social media and your website, etc. Plus, and you also have a giveaway. I forget. You also have a giveaway for our audience members. Absolutely. Uh, and the, the giveaways, uh, maybe we'll, we'll start with that, is for the people that are listening to this right now, uh, send an email to registrar at schoolofgreatness.ca. Registrar is R-E-G-I-S-T-R-A-R. Registrar at schoolofgreatness.ca. And you will get a free uh, coaching session from one of my uh, certified coaches under my watch, which is valued $350. That's really what they charge uh, to have uh, a 45 minutes conversation with you with regards to whatever issue you want to talk about. So that's the free giveaway. The summit we're having is uh, not just in Jamaica and in Canada, but literally is uh, in so many countries around the world. They are national summits. So this one is Jamaica Leadership Summit happening at the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel in Kingston on Thursday, July 19th. It's just amazing when they keep giving me the updates. I even heard a school is signing up their teachers to come. We have, we have people from ministries, Minister of uh, National Security, Ministry of this. They are sending their people. Businesses are sending their leaders. These are not just for people with positions of authority, but for those who also aspire to be, uh, uh, to have positions of authority. So in this conference, your leadership spirit will be ignited. And if you are one of those who are managers because you have a position, but yet not, you're not a leader yet because you need to kind of be baptized as a leader. It's not your position that determines that it's going to happen that day. Networking, I heard some billionaires, Jamaican billionaires are going to be there. Like, it's amazing. And mm -hmm. who knows, the prime minister may come. I actually met him in, when he came for the G7 in uh uh, in Toronto, and he, when I told him about it, he says, yes, they've, they've already received the invitation in Jamaica, and um, they, they may come. So who knows? So I, I'm just saying it, it, this is not a come and greatness, rah, rah, rah. This is come with your tie, business attire. Come and learn the fundamentals and the intricacies of executive leadership. Is for entrepreneurs and leadership, politicians, pastors, teachers, uh, you and I. So uh, for more information on that, go to um, uh, jamaicaleadershipsubmit.com. Now, how could you find me? My name is Alex Hammer. If you go on Facebook, 
put Coach Alex Hammer. So Facebook.com slash Coach Alex Hammer. You'll find me Twitter.com slash Alex Hammer. So like literally Coach Alex Hammer. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on email. I'm, you know, I'm very, very accessible. I would love to hear from you. If you're listening to this right now, oh, I look forward to hearing from you. And thank you so much, Alex. It has been a pleasure. I have been talking with Alex Ihama, the CEO of International School of Greatness, best-selling author, executive coach, and so many other things. It's been a pleasure talking with you, Alex, and I really wish you all the best, all the best for the summit that's coming up. Absolutely. Thank you so much for the what a fantastic work uh, with your podcast, with your speaking engagement, with your leader cast, with your personal development cast, with your financial cast. You have it all going. Um, and I pray that God will continue to expand your territory. I'm looking forward to meeting you. Perhaps we will meet at the Leadership Summit in Jamaica and also have you come to the Canadian Leadership Summit. We have come to the end of another great episode of the Entrepreneur You podcast. Remember to subscribe in Apple Podcast and download all the episodes that you would have missed if you have not already subscribed and downloaded the episodes and play them to the end as well because good stuff is always at the end too. So do that as well as go and leave a rate and review right now. I'd appreciate that. It helps a lot because I put a lot of effort into creating this free content and it does help when I know that it is of significant value to you. So show your love by going to Apple Podcasts and just leave a rate and review. And when you leave that review, do send me an email at hennikawatkisporter at gmail.com because I'd love to be able to read them in an upcoming episode. And if I'm not notified, I won't know it's there because unless you go into all the different stores in Apple, there is no way that I can actually know that a review was left or a current review was left. So it's important that when you leave your review, you send me an email, let me know about it so I can go look for it and read it live on an episode of the Entrepreneur You podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Henneke Watkins Porto. Remember, you were born to win, but to be a winner, you must plan to win, prepare to win and expect to win. What good?